whenever there's a disaster or anything um, that occurs where there's a high number of injured people, um, you know, our initial response or our gut response is to, of course, go down and help. The day when the devastation occurred on Haiti, uh, one of my colleagues from Haiti, he came to me and he wanted us to do something. In fact, you also wanted to do something. Unfortunately, you couldn't do it. And that was the first thing that wrote me to, uh, to write to the CIR. Aside from the obvious fact that there was, a, there was a tremendous need for there to be people there doing the work, I think I felt like I needed to be there. I've been, uh, uh, I've been raised in Haiti. I did all my medical school in Haiti. And uh, I felt that, you know, it was, uh, you know, time for me to, to give back. I think the Haitians have been treated miserably in the past. They have the poorest standard of living in the Western Hemisphere. Seventy percent of the Haitians are unemployed. And even in Port-au-Prince, the capital, there's no sewage facilities. And this was before the earthquake. They've really been beaten down and suffered a succession of dictators and hostile governments. The Duvaliers, Papa Doc, who was a, actually a doctor, and Baby Doc, who was his son. And they were sponsored or supported by the U.S. So I felt a debt. I felt a debt as a U.S. citizen. I felt a responsibility as a physician. We spend the whole time in uh, the tent hospital set up by Medicine Project from University of Miami. That was within the north portion of the airport. Uh, it's, a, it's a tented hospital, but it's pretty much a uh, good facility. It has an OR, it has ICU, it has a periodic setup, it has a periodic intensive care unit, it had a medical floor, it had a place to live in, it has a place to take a shower. So it was a complete setup, though it was in a tent. The first time down, that was all amputations, and it's amputations using jiggly saws and whatever you have. I did a lot of wound care. Um, I effectively ran the mother-baby unit, so there were two deliveries while I was there. It was very, very battlefield surgery in the sense that um, the anesthesia was largely ketamine, midazolam, plus or minus some fentanyl, no intubation, because uh, there were no ventilators, no <laughs> endotracheal tubes. We worked in 12-hour shifts. We worked 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and the other team worked 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. and um, so we had morning rounds and night rounds pretty much. Um, we wrote notes on patients in charts that we made on clipboards. In the triage area we saw 250 people a day and clearly we couldn't you know take exhaustive histories or do proper physicals, but we treated what we could treat. Dealing with the enormity of the event, as well as the repercussions, was overwhelming at times. At the same time, it was amazing to see their resilience and their dedication to struggle for life and uh, their ability to maintain their sanity in this very crazy situation. So I actually learned a lot from them about humility and striving, not giving up. I didn't see people who were angry or resentful or disorganized. There was a phenomenal outpouring of uh, physicians, nurses, logisticians, everyone who just wanted to come down and help. And people that, um, with my maybe preconceived notions, would be the last people I'd expect to see in Haiti. And I think it was wonderful. You know, there is that need to help. But I think the help is in two parts. It's helping on the ground at the time of the catastrophe or the emergency and then the help is also understanding why that country is so poor and why many countries are so poor and what our role is in that poverty. I feel you know very blessed that during that difficult time you know I was there I was at this moment where I am right now. I think that it would be wonderful if everybody could have this kind of experience at some point in their medical training because um, the obvious lessons are that you don't always have everything that you need and we rely very much on technologies that we have that other places don't have. But the things that you learn beyond medicine are much bigger than that and much more important than that. And those are to never forget that there are people that need things that you can provide and, the, and there are things that you can do to help other people and that whenever you have the opportunity to do that, you should. Um, I think that's the biggest lesson.